Hey, this is Tim Lane at Sinusure Dental Lab. Going to demonstrate the 10 minute finish technique. <clears throat> this is a case that came out a little dirty, but we'll deal with it. It's fairly clean around the teeth. I don't do much finishing in the palette because we use Ceylon patterns <clears throat> from Meyerson, and generally they don't require much finishing. My tools are big white wheel. I like the bevel edged. Uh, you'll see why. And pretty much these four burrs. This is a number five burr that I have flattened one side of to use as my stippling burr. And I'll explain that more when I get to that part. Um, Remove the case has already been spotted in, so I'll just take it off the model without cracking it in two. If we're lucky. Remember this case, I don't remember why it's not releasing well. But now it is. We use a VSEP as our separator. And when you boil things out right uh, with <coughs> detergent and apply the VSEP at the right time, uh, generally they come out fairly clean. But, as with a lot of things, people get in a hurry and they cut corners. And I try to explain to them, don't cut corners, it just costs you more time later. This is, this should be considered part of the divesting part, so I'm not going to count it against my 10 minute finish. This is our palatal, pat, uh, palatal relief that we use with our Luckman post dam. There's a post dam that basically follows this pattern, and it's got a bead all the way around and what we call it an elongated bra and it provides unbelievable suction and just works real well 98 percent of my doctors request it and uh, the other ones either make their own post dam or ask for a bra shape All right, make a nice pretty digit bench. And this is how we do it. I'm going to set a timer just for funsies. Have the big white wheel. I make one cut going for the depth that I want, which is what I like to call my Dr. Pepper cut. You find the, the depth of the trough and you cut down to about somewhere between 12 o'clock and 2 o'clock. So you're not at the depth of the trough of the sulcus, you're just below it. And you go to the post down area. Take it nice and easy. You don't want to generate too much heat. And you don't want to 
don't keep going back and forth over the thing when you can eye exactly where you want to cut it. And cut right down to it. Like I said, you're just getting the length right now. Uh, once you got the length, you can go back. And now you want to make one cut. You know what? Want to know where your teeth are, but you want to make one cut to get the thickness of the peripheral wall. And the thickness of the palate. take this burr and blend in from the neck of the tooth to this cut that you've made here. So the thickness cut is your guide for this burr. Like I said, I don't spend a lot of didn't spend a lot of time cleaning up all this stone on this because burr will take it right off anyway. But I like to tell trainees that ventures a little bit like waterfalls in that things flow from one point to the other, flows from the neck of the tooth down to the surface. You don't want a, a big bulge there, and you don't want a, a big gash either. Now the white wheel is a rough cut, so we uh, take this just to make it a little smoother. save us buffing time. And if you're the buffer, that's good. If you're not, eh, who cares? Let the buffer buff it out. Uh, some people will say, well, this is just too big a burr to use, especially in approximately. But it's actually smaller at the tip than this burr, which I, which I use for festooning. And our festoon technique is a loop, a loop, all the way down, all the way down, a loop, and then we box the last three. I tell my technicians that this loop should mirror two thirds of the tube, because that loop is created by the tooth and you don't want some big huge eminence here where the lateral is because laterals aren't that big a rooted tooth whereas the cuspids have a huge root so that's why we take it all the way to the edge and this is where we put in our final Touch up our final anatomy. Now, if this was one of our economy cases, we would just go ahead and buff it smooth after this burr, and not have to use this other burr. But this is our standard venture.
show we do the anatomy. Or test tuning. Now with the exception of the teeth, there are very few sharp lines in the mouth. So I really hate to see test tuning where you have like a line and it's all rounded and should be all rounded and soft. off a burr that we use. This is the inverted cone, which I use for cutting out muscle attachments. And I like to try to blend the muscle attachment into a major piece of my festoon. I hate to see a muscle attachment come right in the center of this cuspid eminence. So I kind of roll it into it. And I also use a pointy burr uh, to relieve the underside of the muscle attachments give them just a little bit more space. And all my talking has gotten me behind. But basically it's ready to stipple. We put in our stippling burr. My burr is straight. I leave it extended about 15 millimeters because I don't want it to bounce all over the place. And this lathe goes 3,500 RPMs, which means if I stipple for two minutes, I will have at least uh, 6,500 dimples. And I think 6,500 dimples is more than enough dimples in a denture. The nice thing about having such a small burr and having it in the shank to where it doesn't vibrate because you don't really want it to vibrate. You want it to be solid and you have a light touch when you're stippling. Let it make its little dimples. Uh, the other thing is like if you have a little piece of stone you can be very accurate or even a, an acrylic bubble there. You can take them out without too much effort because it's so small and it's not wobbling all over the place. There goes my timer and it will beat for a minute before it stops beating. So my 10 minute denture will probably be an 11 minute venture. I work under a magnifying glass and light like this. Uh, that also helps me focus, keeps me focused. It's not so much that I'm blind, which some employees might say I am, but it keeps me focused and it lets me do like the really tight interproximal stuff as far as getting out a bubble or a piece of stone uh, fairly, fairly easily. And I found that if you spend more than two minutes stippling, like right now, I'm not really stippling. I'm recarving the neck of this tooth. Uh, it had a little more of a ditch in it than I like my teeth to have because uh, 
patients who are getting dentures aren't really known for their hygiene. Uh, and I like, I don't like food traps, especially around the necks of the teeth. That's it. Stipple. I see a line. I don't like lines. I like everything to be soft and rounded. Now the last thing we do is we take a Robinson brush and this is a mixture of pumice and Vaseline and with that we can the pumice protects the teeth. I mean, the pumice, the Vaseline protects the teeth. The pumice cleans out stone and stuff. And like I said before, you know, you can do this a lot easier if it comes out clean, takes less time, but You didn't see me going at a hectic, fast pace. It's basically a slow, meticulous uh, process. And that little bubble I could have taken out with my stippling burr, but stippling burr is put aside. Like I said, this stuff isn't really stuck to the denture much as it looks like because it's coming off fairly easy with just a little touch of the Robinson brush and the pumice Vaseline mixture. On the underside, it's a really rough, <coughs> sorry, uh, rough denture. It looks like it was a recent immediate. And sometimes what causes dentures to come out dirty on the underside is the dentist or whoever poured up the model had too much water in their mix and so the surface of the model is actually a little on the soft side and the uh, material will kind of grab onto it. Anyway, that's the technique. Work on it. You can get it to where it's... Uh, in 10 minutes and uh, good luck with it.